In this video I want to talk to you about the Caterpillar, how for the longest time it's been one of the best haulers in the game, why it still is, and the kind of future that it has. It's been a long time since CIG's talked about the modularity of the Caterpillar, but I think it's something that needs to be discussed to really understand how great the ship is. So let's talk about it. The Caterpillar was the last ship added to the Kickstarter. It was said to rival the Freelancer, but given the size that we know it to be, it's kind of in another category of ship altogether. For a long time, it was the highest cargo capacity ship one could fly until the C2 came along. It doesn't necessarily make it better than the C2 because it has so many doors along the sides and the front that you really can get all your crew shoving boxes in all at the same time to get everything in and packed in as fast as possible. When you've got a time limit on what you're doing, it still is an absolutely unrivaled ship for its capacity. The front of the ship can also hold a small fleet of Dragonfly, another ship from Drake that's sold as a hover bike but can also fly in space with guns and has a shield so why not use it as a snub it's one of my favorite hover vehicles another absolutely amazing feature of the caterpillar is that the command pod on the side can detach and so when you need to get away faster, you detach it and it becomes like a herald, but just a, just a little bit bigger, you know? In the lore, there are stories of them racing them uh, or detaching it to move the body of another caterpillar somewhere else. I also think it could be quite useful when we have weather effects for going down and picking up small cargo in places where the weather would make bringing a caterpillar down a little bit harder. Not that the caterpillar is the biggest ship, I'm just thinking extreme environments could be very useful. The caterpillar is a drake ship and thus made for pirating in an unofficial capacity of course. Hence you have the doors that I talked about earlier, but also I think that is where a lot of the modularity is going to come into play. When pirating, you're more likely to be in danger, so a medical area could be useful. They speculated early on about a front module to catapult heavily armed troops onto nearby ships. I don't think we're going to get anything like the nail outside Squadron 42 that penetrates ships because simply it creates too much of a mess in terms of balancing that kind of thing because if you're going through all their shielding and armor and needing to hack your way in or create a hole where a turret is or anything like that if you're bypassing all of these gameplay loops it invalidates them and so that kind of thing is probably going to be only in squadron 42 on a select few spec ops missions. Not that we can't have similar in the Caterpillar if the devs decide to go down that route, which I hope they do because it would be extremely cool to fly in through space with a rocket strapped to your feet, just ho hoping you'd hit your target, you know. Outside of having a Kraken, which honestly few people will be able to afford uh, given you know, it can be the choice between buying a car in real life and owning that ship. The, the Caterpillar will be the centerpiece of a lot of pirate fleets that go out. Because also anything bigger is going to be slower and slower than a Caterpillar is not good. It's not useful. You want to be able to get out of there. And while the Caterpillar is slow, it does have that command pod which will go a lot faster. Hopefully CIG get that working soon because it's cool. Going back to modularity, 
you need to think about the other ships that we know have modules. Now, in the online bar citizen that happened, in one of the cutout rooms, we talked a bit about modularity with one of the devs. And while we didn't get a lot of new information, we got a bit of insight about how CIG looks at modularity. Take the whole series as an example. It's a ship that isn't modular as far as CIG are concerned. That doesn't mean you won't be able to customize it, swapping out plates for a turret or a pad for a ship to land on that you're going to carry along or something like that. It's just that at the end of the day, it's not going to deviate from being a hauler with these modules. Its job will still be hauling and that's not going to change. What a module does is it changes the role of the ship. Look at the expanse. Depending on what module you have, it's either a cargo ship, a medical ship, or a refinery. These three modules change the role of the ship. And look at the Endeavour as well, which has loads of different modules that you put together, but each one can change how the ship works from a drug lab to a hospital, to science, to deep space exploration through a telescope, which is a different kind of exploration, but I'm going off topic. The Endeavour is an exciting ship. The Endeavour is something that can take on a lot of different roles depending on the modules that it has. Now the Caterpillar is stated to be modular and they have not moved away from that. That's exciting. And this means hopefully that fully kitted out with modules it won't necessarily just be a cargo hauler anymore but there's different sections giving it different roles a bit more like the endeavor than the expanse with different ways of putting it together i mean they might cost a bit depending on what's in them but I think Caterpillar owners are going to be very happy in the future if it keeps the promised modularity. Now, what modularity we get will depend on Drake. It's going to be the Drake kind of quality that we've come to expect. It's going to be functional and it's going to be easy to repair with low end materials meaning that it can be repaired at the edge of space where you can't get the latest and greatest stuff. So don't expect it to be the latest and greatest in everything, but that's never stopped Drake from making things that are really good. Consider the Corsair in its versatility and tell me that it's not a competitor to the Connie, because, you know, it is. And the Connie is a lot higher tier as far as the cost of the thing in the verse is concerned. So just because it is made by Drake doesn't mean it needs to be bad. It just means that it needs to be practical and CIG decides what that means. And we're not going to get something that's useless because they want us to be excited by the ships and what we can do with them you know but well, as long as we ignore the cutlass steel which is a silly toy made for npcs to fly in on a small ship for players it's a bit impractical annoying the cutlass steel which is basically an npc drop ship and the rock ds which we think is probably only existing for Squadron 42 so they can have a non-rail section where you're mining and we have another NPC. But regardless, these things have functionality. But they can still be fun. You can get them in the burst and you make the money. Remember, you don't need to spend a penny. Now I'm not really sure what modules we'll get at the end of the day. And if you've got any ideas, uh, let me know because I'm interested to hear them. Along with modularity, there are other things that the ship should be able to do but currently doesn't. For
For example, there's a little hatch to get to the top, which doesn't open. The components aren't accessible and the doors are meant to open to lifts, well, transforming into lifts that then go down to the floor for easier ingress of heavier cargo. I have a feeling we'll get all of these things once they are set with modularity, but I could be proven wrong. Now this video was brought to you by Rolander. He commissioned it off my coffee page, which any of you can do to support me, but you can also subscribe. I'm trying to reach a thousand followers so that I can get a bit of money from the adverts that YouTube are having for free at the moment. Yeah, doesn't hurt. Now, if you stayed this far, I've got one more treat for you. Like in many of my videos, I've been slipping in bloopers at the end. Thanks for watching. <laughs>